हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू स्टडी स्पेक्ट्रम वेलकम टू द क्लास एट स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ महाराष्ट्र स्टेट बोर्ड एंड वेलकम टू दिस साइंस लेक्चर टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद द वेरी फर्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज स्टार्स एंड सोलर सिस्टम्स नाउ व्हाट वर व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इन दिस चैप्टर लेट अस फिगर आउट दैट फर्स्ट वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज अ स्टार व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ स्टार्स अवेलेबल इन दिस यूनिवर्स व्हाट इज अ सोलर सिस्टम how many or what are the possibilities of existence of solar systems where these solar systems are exactly located and we'll also come to know about moon which is the natural satellite of this planet earth we'll talk about constellations how many types of constellations are seen are available which we can see in the night uh, due to the availability of stars we'll talk about their features what they represent what they look like as a human being animal or which type of shape they are having we'll also talk about different parts different uh, members of the solar system like planets we'll talk about the features of those planets we'll also talk about artificial satellites how these satellites help us for communication and how are they different from natural satellites okay right? to begin with let us start and understand what is a solar system now what is a solar system a solar system refers to a star and all those objects which orbits around it or which revolves around that particular star in their own orbit our solar system consists of eight planets and the star as sun a solar system refers to a star and all those objects which orbit around it now our solar system is having that star as sun which we see because of which the sunlight is available in daytime correct and there are eight planets which revolves around it of different sizes there are dwarf planets like asteroids and comets so our solar system basically consists of sun as star eight main planets and dwarf planets dwarf means small heavenly bodies dwarf planets like asteroids and comets now when did this solar system where our planet earth is also a member formed our solar system is assumed to be formed 4.6 billion years ago when a giant molecule interstellar molecule collapsed so i repeat our solar system was formed roughly 4.6 billion years ago from a gravitational collapse of a giant interstellar molecular cloud now since we are studying about solar system before we actually go into the text we are studying about solar system so let us talk about its members and their properties also now if we talk about the mass of the solar system the vast majority of the system's mass is located in sun if you talk about the mass of the whole of the solar system the majority of the mass of the solar system is located inside the sun why because sun is the largest heavenly body of our solar system okay so the vast majority of the system's mass is in the sun with most of the remaining mass contained in jupiter which is the largest planet of this solar system correct i repeat when we talk about the mass of the solar system most of the mass majority of the mass is located inside the sun and the remaining mass majority of the remaining mass is located in jupiter why jupiter is the largest planet of the solar system now uh, we have just learned we have in our solar system star is the sun or sun is the star and we have eight big planets and few dwarf planets like asteroids and comets now what are the different eight planets starting from the uh, nearest uh, point uh, of sun mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune now the first four planets are actually the inner planets they are nearer to sun the four smaller inner planets that is mercury venus earth and mars are terrestrial planets these are called as terrestrial planets being primarily composed of rock and metal 
these four planets the inner planets which are closer to sun mercury venus earth and mars are called as terrestrial planets and they are mainly composed of rock and metal the four other planets are called giant planets more massive than the terrestrials the four planets the other four planets are jupiter saturn uranus and neptune they are more massive than the terrestrial planets the inner terrestrial planets that is uh, mercury venus earth and mars now the two largest that is so, uh, jupiter and saturn the two largest planets that is jupiter and saturn are gas giants what are gas giants they are mainly composed of hydrogen and helium gas that is why they are called as gas giants the two planets jupiter and saturn are also called as gas giants because they are mainly composed of two gases that is hydrogen and helium the other two planets that is uranus and neptune are called ice giants why they are called ice giants because they are mainly composed of uh, substances with relatively high melting points and mainly composed of ice that is why they are called as ice giants so what we have just learned we have just learned the inner four planets that is mercury venus earth and mars are called terrestrial planets the two planets jupiter and saturn which are giant planets are also called as gas giants because they are mainly composed of gases like hydrogen helium whereas the last two planets that is uranus and neptune are called as ice giants because they are they are having relatively high melting points and uh, compared to jupiter and saturn they are mainly composed of ices correct okay? such as water and ammonia and also methane so water ammonia and methane are basically the uh, material inside uranus and neptune and because of which they are also called as ice giants correct so three classifications terrestrial planets gas giants and ice giants terrestrial planets four planets that is mercury venus earth and mars gas planets jupiter and saturn and ice giants uranus and neptune now all planets have circular orbits that lie within a nearly flat disk called the ecliptic all these planets revolve around the sun in a circular Uh, orbit and which is called as ecliptic now do remember in this universe it is a it is a part of nature every smaller heavenly body revolves around a bigger heavenly body justification is moon revolves around the earth because size of moon is less than earth earth revolves around the sun and so do the other seven planets because their size sizes are less than sun so what we have learned so far we have talked about solar system what is the composition of solar system what are the different members of solar system solar system was formed roughly 4.6 billion years ago uh, by the gravitational collapse of a giant interstellar molecular cloud correct we have categorized the eight planets of our solar system into three uh, ways the first one the inner four planets that is uh, mercury venus earth and mars are called terrestrial planets whereas the next two members that is jupiter and saturn are called gas giants because they are primarily composed of two main gases that is hydrogen and helium the next two members the last two members rather uranus and neptune are classified as ice giants why because they have relatively high melting point in comparison with helium and hydrogen gases such as water ammonia and methane also there are smaller sizes of heavenly bodies rotating in between uh, mars and jupiter around the sun and these are termed as asteroids and also as comets few uh, cluster of clouds in a long you know a, a tube shape are called as uh, comets which also revolve around the sun and they are termed as dwarf planets six of the planets at least three of the dwarf planets and many of the smaller bodies are orbited by natural satellites usually termed 
moons after the moon each of the outer planet is encircled by planetary rings of dust and other small objects okay now let us talk about star we have talked about solar system what is a solar system when it was formed what are the different planets of solar system our solar system and how they are classified now let us talk about a star what is a star we all know that nearest star to earth is sun which we see in uh, you know morning time the yellow planet because of which uh, we receive light on the surface of earth so the nearest star to earth is sun now what is a star a star is a luminous sphere of plasma held together by its own gravity i repeat a star is a luminous sphere of plasma held together by its own gravity okay now sun is a star in our galaxy which is called as milky way but that does not mean sun is the only star in our galaxy milky way correct there are many stars uh, which we can see in night and they appear to be very fixed points because of their very you know huge value of distances from the surface of earth so there are many millions of stars in our galaxy milky way now these stars which are lying in our galaxy milky way means there must be many milky ways there must be many galaxies which have millions and billions and trillions of stars these galaxies combine together to form the universe so if we try to break universe or classify universe in different different ways a universe consists of millions of galaxies milky way is one of the galaxy in which our solar system resides and a galaxy consists of millions of stars and there can be millions of solar system also which we do not know but we know about our solar system our solar system has a star named as sun and eight planets main planets and dwarf planets like asteroids and comets correct so we have talked about star we have talked about solar system now we will move to the textual things of our uh, class 8 standard that is we will talk about moon first then constellations then properties of different planets uh, features of different planets and the uses of artificial uh, satellites moon is a natural satellites we will also talk about natural satellites how many natural satellite satellites are there in our solar system we will also talk about artificial satellites and their uses okay so let us start with moon first which is a natural satellite of earth and moon revolves around the earth in a circular orbit similarly as earth revolves around the sun in a circular orbit correct do remember size of moon is far less than size of earth okay and also the gravity on moon is also less than the gravity on earth now earth takes 365 days to make a circular uh, revolution around the sun correct in its own orbit earth takes 365 days to complete a circle around the sun whereas moon takes 27.3 days to make a circle around the earth now point to be noted both earth and sun have two types of rotations they rotate about their own axis also and they rotate about the sun also that is called revolution so earth all revolves around the sun moon revolves around the earth earth rotate about its own axis and moon also rotates about its own axis now earth takes 365 days to make a circle around the sun moon takes 27.3 days to make a circle around the earth but moon also takes 27.3 days to make a rotation around its own central axis choose the right kindergarten a right bag and matching bottle to go with the right school the right friends Choose the right subject and score well. Be an expert in all. The right teacher, and make sure that they like you. Choose the right timing, the right bus, and take a cab if getting late. The 
right way and don't stand near the gate. Mind the pockets. Better get into ladies' compartment and make sure your moustache hasn't started coming. Choose the right study time and forget games. IPL, IHL, rock and metal, guitar, axe. The right group and be a model to your brother. Seriously. Choose the right syllabus, the right test paper. Keep guessing questions for exams. Choose the right branch, the right college, the right stream. Choose the right career. Lucky to have a father's business to take care of and a father to allow that. The right counselor, the right form and make sure the project is submitted on time. Choose the right website and rely on your friends for more information. Oblivious of the sites they have been to, there is no end to your woes. Getting better with every step you climb up the ladder, the summer vacation shorter, the bucket list bigger, the night darker, the books heavier. The only light you have is your friends ahead of you. Probably he is right. Ever thought how? He got the direction? No more spending your energy and money on coaching classes. No more missing classes for rain rally and nonsense. Get your interest back in subjects through our creative ways of teaching. Doubts, concepts, applications, all explained through one vibrant animation. Subjects covered by multiple teachers with repeat telecasts. Special programs only for basic foundation and paper analysis. Personality development, career counseling, admissions, hobbies, all covered. A new approach to study with long-term perspective. So sit back comfortably in your homes and watch Study Spectrum TV channel. Now let us talk about some features of Moon. Moon First point, Moon is the nearest heavenly body present to Earth. Okay. Second point, Moon revolves around the Earth in its own orbit, circular orbit. Third. Now, as the radius of Earth, as we know, the radius of Earth is 6400 kilometers or the diameter of Earth is 12800 kilometers. Now, the distance of Moon from Earth is roughly 384,400 kilometers. So, the distance of moon from earth is how much? 384,400 kilometers. Also, moon is a satellite for earth. Now, since moon is not man-made, it is a natural. So, moon is also called as natural satellite of the earth. We all know, we all see television, read newspaper articles, see news that every year, every month or every season NASA or ISRO in India launch satellite. Those satellites are artificial satellites. Why? Because they are man-made. Whereas moon is a natural satellite. So what are the different features? We'll just recall again. Moon is the nearest heavenly body present to earth. Moon revolves around the Earth in a circular orbit. Moon is a satellite, as it is a natural satellite. Distance of moon from Earth is roughly 3,84,400 kilometers. Correct? Now, we have seen, uh, we have just talked about the features of moon. Now, let us understand uh, with the help of an activity what is the difference between rotation and revolution? How the axis changes and the term changes, I mean, rotation and revolution. Suppose, suppose these are two people, two persons, okay? This person is standing at a point which is going to act like a center of a circle. Suppose this is a circle, this is a circle, correct? Now, this is the front part of the man, this is also the front part of the man. The white part of my hand is the front part of two person and these are two back part of the person. Okay. Now, this person is facing the person placed at the center of the circle and has been asked 
to take revolution around this particular person standing at the center okay now as this man revolves around this man placed at the center of the circle of the orbit of this particular man what happens both have been asked to continuously face each other wherever they are being positioned in the motion okay it means see these are two front part of the man these are two back part of the man correct right? now as this man walks around a circle and this particular man is at the center of the circle what happens they will always face each other they have been asked to face each other in this particular case of rotation they will not be able to see their back any time correct right? they will not be able to see their backs correct right? now what happens as this center one is also seeing the front man this this particular man and this particular man is also seeing the front part of this man what will happen they will not be able to see the back part of each other and it means this particular man which is on the circumference of the circle is actually undergoing revolution and this particular man which is at the center of the circle is actually undergoing rotation this is undergoing rotation and this is undergoing undergoing revolution the point to be noted since this particular man this hand this particular man is also asked to see the man at the center continuously is undergoing two types of motion one is a translatory motion which is termed as rotational motion or revolution motion and one is rotation motion rotation motion which means this particular man which is walking on the circumference of the circle of the orbit will be undergoing two types of revolution one is rotation which means this way rotation and other is revolution so actually it is rotating like this correct okay. that is what happens while heavenly bodies revolve around bigger heavenly bodies like for example moon revolves around earth and earth revolves around sun now earth revolves around the sun undergoes two things rotation and revolution by rotation it is just moving around its own axis by revolution it is moving around the axis which is placed at the center of the orbit correct right? and similarly when moon revolves around the earth it is undergoing two types of motion one is revolution when it has been asked to uh, move around the axis which is at the center of the circle or orbit of the moon and one is about an axis which is passing through its own body and because of which is uh, it is showing rotation so every planet which is every smaller planet every smaller heavenly body which is revolving around a bigger heavenly body shows rotation also and revolution also so i hope this activity helps you to uh, understand what is rotation and revolution you can see the animated part also over here how these two uh, bodies face each other and the particular body which is on the Uh, circumference of the circle is undergoing both rotation and revolution whereas uh, at the center it is undergoing only rotation so this is how we can understand rotation and revolution so what we have seen so far we have talked about solar system uh, basically we started with what what are the different contents of this chapter what are we going to study in this chapter that is uh, about uh, moon about constellations about the features and uh, properties of different planets about natural and artificial satellites and about the uses of artificial satellites or natural satellites okay then we have talked about solar system what is a solar system when it was formed what are the different classification of planets of the solar system uh, where this solar system actually lies it lies in uh, milky way galaxy uh, then we have talked about stars what what is a star sun is the star of our solar system correct and just now we have talked about features of moon and also what is uh, the word rotation and revolution how a planet or a heavenly body a smaller heavenly body rather shows rotation and revolution while revolving around the bigger heavenly body in a circular orbit correct choose the right kindergarten a right bag and matching bottle to go with
the right school, the right friends, choose the right subjects and score well, be an expert in all, the right teacher, and make sure that they like you. Choose the right timing, the right bus, and take a cab if getting late, the right train, and don't stand near the gates. Mind the pocket. Better get into ladies' compartment and make sure your mustache hasn't started coming. Choose the right study time and forget games. IPL, IHL, rock and metal, guitar, axe. The right group and be a model to your brother. Seriously. Choose the right syllabus, the right test paper. Keep guessing questions for exams. Choose the right branch, the right college, the right stream. Choose the right career. Lucky to have a father's business to take care of and a father to allow that. The right counselor, the right form and make sure the project is submitted on time. Choose the right website and rely on your friends for more information. Oblivious of the sites they have been to, there is no end to your woes. Getting better with every step you climb up the ladder, the summer vacation shorter, the bucket list bigger, the night darker, the books heavier. The only light you have is your friends ahead of you. Probably he is right. Ever thought how? He got the direction? No more spending your energy and money on coaching classes. No more missing classes for rain, rally and nonsense. Get your interest back in subjects through our creative ways of teaching. Doubts, concepts, applications all explained through one vibrant animation. Subjects covered by multiple teachers with repeat telecasts. Special programs only for basic foundation and paper analysis. Personality development, career counseling, admissions, hobbies, all covered. A new approach to study with long-term perspective. So sit back comfortably in your homes and watch Study Spectrum TV channel. Now, we have talked about the features of moon, correct? Now, we all see moon in the sky at night time. We all notice that during a month, uh, every time shape of moon changes. Sometimes it is full uh, moon, sometimes it is crescent moon, sometimes it is half moon, sometimes there is no moon. Correct? Now, let us understand why this happens. And before that, let us understand a few things uh, about moon, which will, which will help us to know why these shapes changes of moon every day, every night in the sky. Correct? Now, suppose uh, today you notice, today in the night you notice moon in the sky. You have uh, note the time when uh, the moon appeared in the sky in the night time. Correct? Suppose it was 7 pm in the evening. Next day, next night, next evening rather, you notice the appearance of moon was not exactly at 7 pm but, but was later or after 7 pm. That will be roughly 50 minutes. It means if today in the evening moon appears at 7 pm, then tomorrow in the evening moon will appear at 7.50 pm. And on the third day if you again notice it will be 50 minutes more later. It means it will not appear on the third day, it, it, third evening it will not appear at 7.50 pm, but it will appear at 8.40 pm. Now the question is, why this happens and why it is responsible for you know different shapes of moon which we see every night in the sky. Now let us understand uh, with the help of an activity, with the help of an animation which we will see why the shapes of moon appears to be different every night, every evening and also there is a day or there is a night rather when there is no moon in the sky which is called as you know no moon uh, night. Correct? <laughs>